Well, today's class is going to be on spading 101, and I'm with Professor Denman at Red Pig Tools. And Bob, really, there is some difference between a shovel and a spade, and it's really very distinct because of the jobs that they do. Yep. So spade is basically for, for breaking ground. A shovel, traditionally, is a tool for moving dirt, for ah. moving it from one place to another, transfer it. This is what most of the world refers to as a shovel, something like this. It's a transfer shovel in the United States, but it's a shovel, and it has a high lift. That is, the handle comes away from the, the flat of the blade at a high angle, and it's for sliding under material and throwing and pitching it. it. Okay. This is an American pattern shovel right here. And this is the most common type of shovel in the United States, but it, most of the rest of the world does not use this tool. Oh. <laughs> it's, and its ancestor is this tool right here, which is a spade, and you can see this one, if I put these handles together, they have two different lifts, or if I put them down on the ground, it's probably a little easier to see, that this one has a fairly high lift, and this one has a lower lift. And in the original, which were from Wales and the rockier parts of England, this tool had no lift at all. It was straight up and down. An American pattern tool has this particular lift so that you can push it, you put it straight out like this, you push down and you can pull here and then slide down and throw the dirt without bending all the way over to the ground. Uh -huh. a spade, if you use, try and use a spade for a shovel, you drive it straight in. You have to rotate all the way down to the ground before you too much lift work. and throw. So it's, a much. spade is really intended to, to uh, uh, just m break the ground. This nowadays is called an irrigation spade. Here's another one. This is a caprock irrigation spade. And these tools are mostly found in agriculture for uh, opening and closing furrows okay. in drainage so that you open a furrow and close it so they're used upright. What most of us think of as a spade is one of these tools here. These are English pattern spades. Now this one is, is the most common uh, model of spade, the short D-handled spade. And it, you'll notice on this particular, it's flat mm -hmm. and uh, some of them are straight across the bottom of them. Some of them have a slight curve. But its job is to be pushed into the ground, pull back, and turn or flick the dirt away as you're preparing a bed and breaking up the ground. This particular one has treads on it. They come both with and without treads. In England and in other parts of Europe, largely uh, they are without treads uh, oh. because they feel like you should have a proper pair of shoes <laughs> when, you, uh, when you use them. Oh, not just our garden shoes, huh? Right. Okay. Uh, you shouldn't be gardening in your Nikes. Now, this is a long-handled tool. I prefer the long-handled tool to the short-handled tools because uh, short-handled tools put the uh, handle down below your, your crotch when you are uh, spading, when you're pulling back, and that puts a lot of strain on your lower back. Okay. They're really best used in, uh, when you're down in a trench and you can't use a long-handled tool, or when you're working on a slope and your work has come up to you. For most purposes, a long handle is better. This short, this little short uh, small spade is called a border spade. It's for working in the perennial border mm -hmm. and in areas where you're, you're where working tight. a little tighter. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a, actually a euphemism. It used to be called a lady spade. Uh -huh. It was a small spade for ladies, but men don't like using lady spades. So now it's a border spade. Well, and sometimes you need something for close in because you have so many plants. Yes. I mean, you can't use something with a really wide blade on right. it. You it can't just doesn't help. So they're, right. they're excellent for getting in among other things, loosening the soil and planting in among other things. Okay. This is a German pattern, and you can see the difference here. Mm -hmm. It's pointed. And then instead of being round at the, or square at the bottom, it's pointed and it flares outwards. Why uh, the advantage of flaring outwards, I'm pretty unsure. Oh, okay. But it's, uh, this one has a tread on it. This is a tool that I make. It's one of several spades I'm starting to make. This one right here is my version of a border spade. Okay. So it's a bit smaller. It's a German border spade. Long handle. This one is Irish. Now the Irish like their spades long and tapered, tapered inward. And uh, this one has a, a long strap on it because it's going to take a lot of strain. When you have a lot of uh, a long blade, you're going to be putting a lot of strain on the handle. So this one has a, is strapped well up the handle. All right. Uh, the, there are spades that are common in the United States. The ones that are most common are the English pattern. Okay. And then these right here, which are specialty spades. 
This is a long taper spade, tapered spade called a sharpshooter and it's used for making trenches, long deep trenches and originally it was for drains when you would install drain tiles. And it actually has a companion tool. Uh, a lot of times you would make that, that drain very deep. This is an agricultural drainage. Okay, sure. And this you would dig the first spit with that and then this one matches up to give you a long tapered trench which you would then fill with gravel or fill with gravel at the bottom and okay, backfill French with dirt drain. at the top. Hey Bob, I think mm -hmm. you should talk about this one because I think that's a very funny looking one. Okay, this is a clay spade. All right. And uh, nowadays they call these uh, they call them sporks, spades and forks. <laughs> but uh, and a spork is like a, a little right. tool for sure. camping. Uh -huh. But this is a uh, t uh, a clay spade. When you're going into clay, a very dense soil, what impedes you is the friction along the blade. It's like going through a block of cheese with a butcher knife. <laughs> right. You get so far and then it gets harder and harder as you go along. Well, you can take a wire and run it through a block of cheese quite easily, easier, and this is sure. the same principle. By eliminating blade surface, you eliminate friction. Uh, very cool. Bob, there's two more. Let's talk about it on the way on the end here, and those look very interesting. So different than all the other ones here. This one right here, this is a, a spade from Holland. That's a cable laying spade, oh. and it makes a very deep, narrow trench. Uh, and you, you dig a hole. The best way to dig a trench is to dig a hole and then start shaving the side. And you don't really need uh, a great a tread. You can just push this in like right. this because you're taking a thin flake. This one right here is a uh, spade that I designed for raised beds. Oh, a lot of people have those. Yeah. Sure. Raised beds, the soil is nice and fluffy mm -hmm. and loose, so you can use a really huge spade that in heavy soil would be impossible to use. Sure. But even a small person can take advantage. You can move a lot more dirt right. uh, with the, this, uh, this kind of spade. Well, I think we kind of scratched the surface on all the different spades. Really, to have the tools, right tools for all the work, makes your life so much easier in the garden. I mean, you save your body and you get the work done so much faster. You know, you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to your website and, or come on out and see Bob and all of the cool tools that he has. Thank you so much. You're welcome.